Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. If you could do me a quick favor, see that little subscribe button at the bottom of your screen? Go ahead, click that subscribe button. Really does help our channel grow, our audience grow, and I really do appreciate it more than you know. So click that subscribe button. Appreciate your support. Now, here's the video that you came here for. The UConn Huskies who took on the San Diego State Aztecs reigning national runners-up against the reigning national champions, a rematch of last year's national championship game. And I want to start there because UConn fans, let's be honest, UConn fans have been on my butt a little bit. And I get it, right? I'm supposed to be the UConn guy. I'm supposed to talk about them more than anybody. But it feels like, for the most part, they're just, I've said it a million times, we haven't talked a ton about UConn because they are so awesome, they are so dominant, they are so convincing in their victories that there's just not that much to say. I have a buddy who works at UConn. Uh, he actually went to law school at Alabama. He said this is the new age process with Nick Saban. Remember Nick Saban, that early 2010, 2011, 2012 era? They called it joyless murder ball. That is basically what UConn basketball is as they go into the Sweet 16 against a team that I thought could put up a challenge, and they win 82 to 52 a final over San Diego State. When I think about this game, a couple of things stand out as we start to recap these Thursday night games. The first thing that stands out, so I'm gonna go ahead and be honest, okay? First thing that stands out, like I said, I actually thought that San Diego State could actually give UConn a game. Now, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm delusional. Maybe I know the Huskies too much. But when I came into this game, there was something that I was thinking, and that was this, is that with UConn, they play so hard. They're so physical. They're so aggressive on offense, defense, rebounding, whatever, that I think every team goes into games against UConn thinking, oh, we're just as tough. We're just as physical. We're just as bad as those guys. And then you get into the game. And to quote Mike Tyson, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched. And then to quote Mike Tyson again, you just kind of fade into Bolivian. That's kind of what happens with UConn's opponents. And so I think there's really probably about five to 10 teams in college basketball that I think are really up for the challenge on a night in, night out basis of facing UConn and what they bring to the table. And so I bring it up because I thought San Diego State was one of those teams. And to their credit, San Diego State kind of was one of those teams. They jump out. They were the first team to have a lead against UConn in this NCAA tournament. Jump out to a 2-0 lead. It's 10-9 at the first TV timeout. And you sit there and say, like, this could be a game. UConn opens up a reasonably big lead. San Diego State cuts back into it. And then by halftime, it's about a nine-point game. But if you watch this game, it was close. It was competitive. It was tough. And I don't know that there was ever a moment that you were like, oh, San Diego State is winning this game. But I don't think there was a moment in the first half where you said San Diego State can't win this game. And so then what happened in the second half, I think was the most vintage UConn effort that we have seen so far, okay? UConn comes out. It is a nine-point game. Did you see what UConn did in the second half outscoring San Diego State 42 to 31 in that second half, doubling up a really good team, a San Diego State team that won 26 games this year, that of course played for the national championship game. And what was crazy was it was basically doing exactly what I said. And so when I think about this game and I think about UConn season, and we have talked about this a few times with UConn throughout the year. The thing about UConn, right, because I have all these people asking me, we get a lot of like Kentucky fans like Torres, what is the secret to UConn's success? You know, Louisville fans, even, even fans that are having good years, like what is it about UConn? And if you just watched UConn, what I am here to tell you, the secret is that there really is no secret. Like, like I remember Chris Beard when he was at Texas Tech, he used to say the secret's in the dirt, okay? What does the secrets in the dirt means? What the secrets in the dirt means is that the secret is that there is no secret. We're just going to get in the dirt and outwork you. And when I watch UConn, that is exactly who they are. You know why they won this game? 
it wasn't because of recruiting rankings or their players were that much better. Now, maybe their players are that much better because Dan Hurley has evaluated well, recruited well, and developed well. But remember, UConn has one McDonald's All-American. Remember, Alex Caravan, who finished this game with uh, 17, uh, 16 points in this game. Excuse me, he had eight. I apologize. But he had like eight in the first 10 minutes. Alex Caravan was a fringe top 100 recruit. Donovan Klingon was like a fringe top 75 recruit. Cam Spencer began his career at Loyola of, of, of Maryland. Tristan Newton began his career at East Carolina. These aren't a slew of McDonald's All-Americans. What they do is they work harder than you, they prepare better than you, and when the game starts, they are freaking relentless for 40 minutes. And I've talked about this time and time and time again, but you watch these games and it's close for 10 minutes, it's close for 15 minutes, it's close for 20 or 25 minutes, but they are just so relentless, they just kill you and they never let up. And so what is the secret? They want it more than you. Just look at the stats, okay? So San Diego State is one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. UConn finishes with 82 points. You know the secret to this game? UConn had a plus 21 rebounding advantage against one of the toughest, most physical, nasty teams in college basketball. They had 21 offensive boards. And don't just tell me it's because they're bigger and tougher than you. Steph Castle, he's a guard, led the team with 11 boards. Tristan Newton had seven. Our buddy Hassan Diara, 5'10, sixth man, Big East freshman of the year, or Big East sixth man of the year, had four boards off the bench. And so to me, the secret is they are just so relentless, so tough, so physical. And that's what I think separates this team from everybody else in college basketball. It's also as we look ahead to the Elite Eight, I'll be blunt. I actually think that the Illinois team that they're going to play, we're going to talk about the Illinois game in a minute. I think Illinois is the toughest matchup they can possibly have, and let me explain why. It is because I had a bunch of UConn fans, oh, we don't we don't want Iowa State. And what I say, oh, give me Iowa State. Because here's the thing about UConn. If you're going to get in a rock fight, bruise, slugfest, elbows, beat them up game down low, that's what UConn wants to do, but their players are better and they're eventually going to overwhelm you on offense. It's what they did to San Diego State on Thursday night. It's what they did to Marquette in the Big East Championship game. It's what they've done to so many different teams. Xavier in the first round of the Big East tournament where they were only up by one point at halftime. You know the teams that they don't want to face? I actually think Illinois will give them more trouble than anybody else. And I'll tell you why Illinois will give you more trouble than anybody else. It's because the game plan to beat UConn, I truly believe, it is what St. John's did to UConn in the Big East semifinals. Rick Pitino basically said, we know we can't defend them, so we are exerting all of our energy to putting the ball in the basket. It's all we care about, getting buckets, trying to outscore them, trying to be one point better. If we if we got to score, if we give up 95, we got to score 96. And St. John's is really the only team since the Creighton loss in the middle of February that's even been competitive against UConn throughout the last half of the season. They put up 90 points in the Big East uh, tournament, the Big East semifinal. That is the secret. That is what made that game closest. They just basically said, we're not even going to try to defend them. We just have to go bucket for bucket with them. So you look at the Illinois team that they're going to face. I know Illinois only scored 72 against Iowa State. But at the same time, at the same time, Illinois is, I believe, the best offensive team left in this tournament. Better than Purdue, better than Gonzaga, better than Tennessee, even Creighton. I know Creighton beat UConn. I think Illinois is the toughest test they will have. So credit UConn. All I will say, Husky fans, I know you know this. Enjoy this moment, man. It's not supposed to look like this. It's not supposed to be this easy. A nine-point lead at halftime becomes a nine point lead at halftime becomes a 30 point victory. I mean, think about it like this. Illinois was up by 10 at the half. They win by three. Carolina tonight was up by eight at the half. They lose by two. UConn was up by nine at the half and go plus 21 in the second half. Credit to the UConn Huskies for taking care of business.